Well, yesterday was the big day and a lot has happened and we are getting more results as I film right now. So I can't necessarily speak with much specificity because everything that I'm talking about is subject to change. Things are moving rapidly, so I can only speak broadly about this election, but I do want to give you some takeaways. Um, basically, what we expected would happen did end up happening. Early on in the night, you know, based on the polls, we were kind of hoping that this would all end up in one big anti-climatic ending where Biden wins Florida and then basically Trump doesn't necessarily have a path or if he has a path, it's very narrow so we can kind of breathe easy. But that didn't happen. And what we instead got was the red mirage situation where it seemed as if in states like Michigan and Wisconsin, Trump was leading going to bed. We kind of thought... All right, you know, since Biden is underperforming the polls in other places, it isn't illogical to think that maybe the red mirage isn't, in fact, a mirage. I mean, I fully expected uh, the mail-in ballots to come in and heavily favor Biden. The question was whether or not there would be enough to make up that difference. And the answer is that, yes, there was enough to make up that difference. And because we got that red mirage scenario, Trump capitalized on that opportunity to prematurely declare victory. But as it stands right now, Biden is in the lead and they just called Wisconsin. I think they're on the cusp of calling Michigan for him. And Trump is running out of paths to win this. In fact, I would say that Biden is very likely going to reach that 270 number. We might not even need to wait to see the results of Pennsylvania. It might not necessarily be something that we're waiting on, which was what it seemed like last night when, okay, we don't know when we're going to get the counts in Pennsylvania. And I think that Trump's team is really trying to get the result from the Supreme Court flipped, which allowed them to continue to count votes received, I believe, up to three days after the election. Now that Amy Coney Barrett has been confirmed, his team legally is trying to stop that. But even if Trump is successful there, well, if Biden wins Nevada and Michigan, he just won Wisconsin, that's 270. That's it. So your path diminishes. And he's running out of ways to steal this. Certainly, he's going to try to steal this. You know, as we speak, uh, we're getting reports that his legal team is pursuing actions to halt the vote. He's complaining on Twitter a lot about how they're finding votes and counting them. That's part of the process. But he is going to try to rat fuck his way to victory. Will it work? That's yet to be seen, but we can at least eliminate one scenario, and that was Barton Gelman's scenario, where if it were close in a state that was controlled by Republicans, such as Florida, Trump can try to use his loyalists in that state to appoint their own electors to the Electoral College to flip the votes. The problem with this strategy, if Trump was in fact trying to pursue this, is that in states like Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, these are controlled by Democrats. They have Democratic governors. So he can't necessarily do this. So the best thing that he can do legally is try to stop the vote counting process. And they're already almost finished. So what it's looking like is if Trump is going to be successful at stealing this election, it's going to have to come from a recount. And there's going to have to be some more votes that were there. We're going to have to bank on it being super inaccurate. That's really unlikely. So Trump's running out of options. And so all he can do now is create a lot of chaos to try to win. I mean, his tweets on Twitter, that is damaging. I mean, he warned just the other day that there's going to be violence in Pennsylvania. He was predicting this if they take a while to count the votes. So he knows what he's doing. This is a signal to his base to try to stir up chaos to stop the process. But again, he's losing his path. Now, a lot can change after this video, but still, it is looking very likely that Biden pulls this off. Now, we can't necessarily talk through a lot of the implications here being discussed because I don't want to bank too much of my, my commentary on exit polls, but there are some preliminary um, things we can talk about just right now. First and foremost, obviously, is that this was not a complete repudiation of Donald Trump which is unfortunate. As I stated before, Joe Biden, you know, he's a terrible candidate and doesn't deserve to win in a landslide, but Donald Trump deserved to lose in a landslide. And it's close. 
So this isn't a cl complete repudiation of Donald Trump and Trumpism and white supremacy and fascism. It's close. So what this means is that really this came down to Donald Trump bungling COVID-19. He didn't deliver, didn't even pretend to take it seriously. So right now, it seems as if Trump's failure there, not Trump himself, is ultimately uh, what I expect to be the reason why he uh, loses, if he does in fact lose and the results hold. Having said that though, Democrats, this is kind of a repudiation of their horrible strategy to court Republicans, because guess what? It seems as if there's not very many pro-Biden Republicans, and that strategy was a failure. And Democrats, I mean, it's honestly astonishing how poorly they campaigned. I mean, I get that Donald Trump also ran a terrible campaign, but we have to focus on Joe Biden and Democrats. This strategy, I mean, they are so lucky. If Joe Biden wins, like, he's very lucky because he ran a terrible campaign. His team, I think rightfully so, hid him away for a lot of this process after the primary. And I think that's the right strategy because you don't want to put him in front of people and have him damage himself. But overall, that's not very inspiring. You have to have a message. And do we know what Joe Biden's message was overall? Restore the character of the nation? What does that mean? We all know why Joe Biden is as successful as he was because he's not Donald Trump. It's not about Joe Biden. There was no message that resonated with people. And we really have to look at the way that Donald Trump improved his numbers among people of color and also with LGBTQ plus folks. And I think that part of this is um, Democrats not doing enough to appeal to these types of marginalized communities. Um, but also Joe Biden, I mean, he there was a leak from his campaign that they didn't see Latinos as part of his path to victory. So was there no outreach? And I think that we know that in terms of just grassroots activism, Joe Biden didn't really have that. I mean, there were articles throughout the course of this race where, you know, Donald Trump was knocking on a million doors per week. His team was doing that and Biden wasn't doing anything. They were focusing more on digital organizing. And, you know, it seems as if it's a missed opportunity. Look, I don't want to be too down on Joe Biden now that we don't have the results. We don't necessarily know. I mean, he could still win Georgia, North Carolina. So maybe he does win more easily. We don't necessarily know yet. But it shouldn't have been this close still. It should have been a blowout in Florida. When you have someone like Donald Trump fumble in a pandemic and, and you know, a subsequent economic crash, I mean, this is an easy election. The incumbent always gets blamed. And Donald Trump made it very easy to pin blame on him. He was his own biggest enemy. So that's that's a layup for Democrats. And they still fumbled. They probably lost the Senate. Now, again, we're speaking with uncertainty. I don't necessarily know. Uh, I hope they win the Senate. But it's a real plausible scenario right now. At the time that I record this, at almost 1 p.m. on the West Coast, that Joe Biden could become president and Republicans retain control of the Senate with Mitch McConnell as Senate Majority Leader, meaning that not much is going to get accomplished. Another stimulus? Very, very unlikely, which is why we were pushing for it to get done before the election. So Joe Biden, as president, even if he doesn't have control of the Senate, he can still accomplish quite a bit, right? He can sign executive orders, and he's going to have to be basically the executive order president until Democrats can possibly take back the Senate in 2022. But he can get us back into the Paris Climate Accord, the Iran nuclear deal. He can reinstate DACA. There are things that he can do. But in terms of really broad, you know, structural reforms that were even a possibility, that's eliminated if Republicans do, in fact, hold on to the Senate. So it's a situation where, you know, we got rid of Donald Trump, potentially, who is leading to a spike in COVID cases because he's not taking it seriously. I mean, yesterday we had over 90,000 new cases of coronavirus. That's astonishing. So, you know, Donald Trump lost, but at the same time, Democrats didn't necessarily do enough. I mean, Sarah Gideon lost to Susan Collins. Jamie Harrison lost to Lindsey Graham. Amy McGrath lost to Mitch McConnell. So, you know, we have to acknowledge that the strategy that Democrats were using to court Republicans has been a failure. But yet, you know, we see across the country, pot legalization passing, $15 minimum wage increase, 
passed. Oregon voted to decriminalize all drugs. That passed. So this isn't rocket science. Democrats know what they have to do and understand you are going to be very frustrated because you're going to hear Democratic Party strategists and pundits say, well, look, this just proves that we were right to court Republicans and centrism is, is the ticket to victory. They're not going to come away with the common sense conclusion, right? Um, so Democrats failed. However, I also want to point out that there is a reason why Americans are voting for Donald Trump in spite of how much of a disaster he's been. And I think a large part of that is propaganda, but I don't necessarily believe that that's, that's the entire explanation. I think that Americans do bear some responsibility here. I mean, yes, propaganda in corporate media is an issue, but the American people have to take responsibility. We have to reckon with the fact that there is a large portion of the American population that is comfortable with someone who is a white supremacist, pretty openly so, in the White House. Maybe they feel as if, you know, economically, Trump is better for them, incorrectly so, unless they're wealthy. But still, they voted for him in spite of the fact that it's pretty obvious that he's a white supremacist. I mean, the other day at his campaign rally, with the way he was attacking Ilhan Omar, you would have assumed he would call for an ethno state, a white ethno state. So, you know, there is, you know, a degree of responsibility, personal responsibility, not to sound like a conservative, ironically, that we have to uh, look at with regard to the electorate. Sure, there's propaganda. It oftentimes, you know, corporate media will get Americans to vote against their own self-interest, as we saw with the um, ballot initiative in California with uh, Uber and Lyft. We'll talk about that in a, di in, in a different video. But the American people also, even though Democrats failed them and the media failed them, who doesn't know that Trump is an obvious white supremacist? So we have to grapple with the reality that after watching Donald Trump boast about extrajudicially murdering an American civilian, being openly fascistic, cracking down on peaceful protesters, and straight up being a white supremacist, they're okay with it. And Trump increased the amount of support that he had with people of color. He doubled his support with LGBTQ plus people after appointing a Supreme Court justice who will almost certainly overturn Obergefell v. Hodges after banning trans people from serving in the military. So we have to try to, we, we have to balance what's happening here. We have to try to really do a thoughtful analysis about what's happening here. I think that we can blame the Democratic Party's failure and we should. We can blame corporate media and we should. But where's this disconnect coming from? Why are so many people voting against their own self-interests for someone who clearly doesn't care about them? Is it just, you know, a vote against the establishment? I think, th I think that now is the time to be introspective and try to figure out what's going on. And this may become more clear as we get more numbers in, right? Because we're, we're operating with incomplete information, so we can only make inferences. But maybe we don't have enough evidence to make really large leaps and take away any big conclusions. But currently, I mean, in theory, this shouldn't have been a close election. We should have expected it to be over on night one. Joe Biden should have won Florida. The fact that he didn't, the fact that Democrats were not able to take back the Senate after spending more than $100 million on these races, that speaks to a failure. You know, it's not a repudiation of Donald Trump so far based on what we're seeing now. But I think that it definitely is, this election is, a repudiation of Democrats' strategy to appeal to centrists. That's not working. And this isn't rocket science. So you have to give people a reason to vote. Again, you know, that anti-Trump fervor in this country helped propel Joe Biden to victory if he does in fact win. But that's not enough. And you know the answer. Legal weed. Medicare for all. I mean, this this isn't... This isn't rocket science. Democrats are trying to play 4D chess, but meanwhile, they're hurting themselves when they try to appeal to people on the margins. Like, we, we knew more about Joe Biden's stance on fracking and how he doesn't want to ban it than we did about his actual climate change policy, which wasn't as bad as it was during the primaries. He improved it. He actually did speak with people from the Sunrise Movement, and it's not as good as Bernie's policy, but it was still better. He made an improvement but yet we didn't hear about that. We only heard that he doesn't want to ban fracking. 
you have to connect the dots for voters. You have to do better. So there's a lot, uh, you know, and my thoughts are somewhat jumbled because this is all new information that I'm trying to process. But I mean, either way, uh, Republicans and Democrats have to be introspective and, you know, they have to try to figure out what happened. And I think that the explanation for Donald Trump's fail is definitely COVID-19, which means that I think he probably would have been easily reelected had it not been for this pandemic and the subsequent economic crash. But when it comes to Democrats, I mean, I think that this basically is confirmation that the left is right. And Joe Biden was not the most electable candidate. Bernie Sanders did really well with Latino voters. Joe Biden did not. Bernie had enthusiasm with young voters. Joe Biden did not. So, you know, there's a lot that we have to look at, but I think that it is important for all of us to be introspective, look at where we were right, where we were wrong, and don't be afraid to admit that maybe this strategy failed, but that strategy was a success. Like, this isn't a perfect uh, thing. Like, it, like, there's no right or wrong answer, really, but I think there are some common sense um, conclusions that we can immediately draw, and that is that Democrats should have done better. They should have won back the Senate. The fact that they did not shows that their strategy has not worked, even going up against the monster like Donald Trump. But again, this is all, you know, me speaking with incomplete information. I don't have the full results. I will continue to make videos and update you. But this is basically my first post-election day video explaining my thoughts. And um, this is going to be either a really long, drawn-out week, or we could know by today that, uh, you know, Joe Biden crosses 270. We don't know. But um, I think that we we need to all just take a moment, step back, just breathe, try not to panic, and acknowledge that you know this red mirage, the uh, Trump uh, uh, Trump attempt to st steal this election, this was all expected, you know. So um, can he do that? We're gonna wait and see. But right now, um, you know, uh, we'll just buckle up and uh, see what's gonna happen. It appears Joe Biden's gonna win. But it's not over yet because Donald Trump will be an angry lame duck president until January 21st. That is going to be um, a nightmare. So lots happening. Uh, stay tuned. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay.